Welcome, I'm Dr. David Hausman, owner of Stronghold Chiropractic, and over the next couple of minutes, I'm gonna be spending some time with you, actually walking you through how to read your x-rays. Now, I know there's not a lot of doctors that are gonna spend time teaching you how to go through your MRI or even your CT scan results, but at Stronghold, we're really passionate about you really understanding underlying cause. What's actually causing the symptoms that you walked in our doors dealing with? Before we do any of that, I am going to have to back up and ask you two very important questions. Picture the goals, the dreams, the desires that you're working on that are in your heart um, that you would like to see come to pass over the next couple of years here. Maybe it's get married, maybe it's buy your first home. Any of those things, in order for you to see them come to fruition, what is the one absolute necessity that you and honestly every single one of us has to have in order to see those things come to pass? And the answer is your health. I could have a Maserati, I could have a mansion, I could have the best relationships on the face of the planet, but honestly, they all count for nothing if I don't have my health. Ask anybody who's ever lost their health, they would do anything to get it back. Question number two is, what is health? If I were to ask you, how do you define health? Chances are you're probably gonna say how I feel, nutrition, if I eat really well, if I exercise. They're all very important things that I need in order to facilitate health. The only issue is they're not a working definition of health. If you look at the top three causes of death in America right now, statistically speaking, what are the things that are causing issues with our health? You've got the third leading cause of death, which is heart disease. Now, is it possible that I could have heart disease developing right now, high blood pressure, and not feel it? And the answer is absolutely. 80% of us as men, our first major sign of heart disease is our first heart attack. Number two leading cause of death in America right now is cancer. With that diagnosis, a lot of times it takes anywhere from six to nine years for a tumor to become big enough to even show up on an MRI in the first place. And most of the life of that tumor developing, you don't feel it, you don't have symptoms. So with that being said, how I feel is probably one of the worst ways of judging whether or not I'm healthy. How I look, being on the cover of Men's Health and Fitness magazine, whether or not I exercise, eating right, again, all standards. If I were to look at the World Health Organization's website and what is the definition of health, they say that health isn't the absence of symptoms. So that headache that you walked in with, that neck pain, the low back pain, the numbness and tingling, the digestive problems. Tomorrow morning, if you woke up and those symptoms just magically disappeared, that would be amazing. However, it would not mean that you're healthy. Health is if I have optimal function mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. I'm healthy if my body is functioning properly. How well is my body healing? When you start looking at health from that perspective, it really helps to change uh, the way that you, you look at nutrition, the way that you look at exercise, the way that you look at how you actually nurture and care for your body. We want that for you. We want for you to be able to reach health. If I'm looking at my body from that perspective of health, how well it's functioning, if my body is functioning at 100%, at my full God-given potential, I'm not gonna expect to, to be experiencing the symptoms that you might have walked in these doors with, like headaches or neck pain. Really, what's most interesting about this is when we start looking at percentages in the human body. Up here at 100%, obviously, that's our goal. We wanna be at 100% at our full God-given potential. Now, every single one of us is somewhere on this scale of health. None of us are at 0% because none of us are dead, and none of us are at 100% because nobody's perfect. So where exactly did you walk in then? Where did you start to feel the symptom in the first place? And what all the, the research indicates is it's not when I get down to 90%, 80%, even 70, but when I get all the way down to this threshold of 60% function that I feel my first symptom. So that means it's been developing for a lot longer than when you started to feel it. So we can have issues and, and problems developing and they take root and can be taken place for a very, very long period of time before I ever actually feel it. If health has everything to do with function, then as a doctor, the first question that I'm really gonna ask is what controls every single function 
in the human body. Because when you're coming in with that low back pain, you're dealing with the digestive issues, the symptoms are simply a check engine light popping on on the dashboard of your car. And when that check engine light pops on on the dashboard, the smart thing to do, it would behoove you to take it to like AutoZone or someplace like that and plug it into the computer and figure out, well, what's the error code? What's causing the check engine light to go on in the first place? You would never lean over to the glove box, pull out black tape, and just cover up the check engine light and continue to drive. When you guys are walking in the doors here, the very first thing that we did is we ran a scan on your spine and we looked first and foremost at the brain and the central nervous system. And that thermal scan on the spine is a very objective test that takes out whether or not you're feeling it. It tells us where the problem's at, at different levels of your spine. And this shouldn't surprise you, you came into a chiropractic clinic, but maybe you didn't realize that chiropractic was all about the nervous system, not just the bones in your back. Health has everything to do with function, so what we're concerned with is whether or not your body is functioning the way that it was designed to. So the very first thing that we did with you was we ran a spine scan or a thermal scan on your spine, and that thermal scan on the spine is a very objective test that takes out whether or not you're feeling it. It tells us where the problem's at, at different levels of your spine. We're looking here first because God put 80 to 120 years of life right there in your brain. And that life flows from the brain, down the spinal cord, out the nerves or the wires to every single organ in your body. It tells your heart how to beat, your lungs how to breathe, your stomach how to digest food, it lets you wiggle your fingers, it does all of this from right up here. So the brain is the most important organ in your entire body. We're not pronounced dead in the hospital when our heart stops, it's when our brain stops. So this is the first place that we looked for you to determine, well, what's the underlying cause that's creating the neck pain for you or the numbness and tingling? Because like the scale that we were looking at before, the symptom that you're dealing with, it's all the way down at 60%. What we need to determine is what's the underlying cause. So. When we're doing an evaluation with you and we ran that scan, the scan is simply showing us what levels of your spine could there be damage on the nerves. And so we take damage on the nerves very, very seriously because just like cancer or heart disease, damage on a nerve has the ability to cause an organ to malfunction, develop disease, produce symptoms, and it can even cause it to shut down early. When we're evaluating the spine and it shows us that there's an issue that's taking place for you, we then have to do further testing and the further testing is x-rays. The x-rays are showing us these guys here, the bones in your spine. And God gave us bones to surround and protect each and every one of these nerves that come out. And those nerves are what supply life from your brain to each and every organ in your body. So when we took your x-rays, the one thing that we were looking for is this thing called subluxation. Subluxation, it's not a dislocation where a bone completely dislocates. What subluxation in Latin means is sub, less than, lux means divine light. So the life that comes from your brain flowing down your spinal cord and out that nerve, let's say it's going to your heart. If that life is flowing through the nerve uninhibited or at 100%, then I would expect my heart to be beating at 100%. But you live life, right? And so when you live life and you drive like a thug and sleep like a pretzel and car accidents, all that kind of stuff, over the years you start to shift the structure of your spine, it becomes very, very easy for you to apply pressure or damage on the nerve. And the one thing that God gave us to protect our nervous system is the one thing that actually can damage it. And so subluxation is when a bone shifts out of position and puts pressure or damage on a nerve and then causes malfunction to where that nerve controls. So if it was my heart and I were to apply pressure on the nerve going to my heart, over time if I left it for a month, six months, a year, five years, some people we've seen 18, 25 years of nerve pressure. The question is, what does that do to my heart? Because it might cause numbness and tingling in my arm, like when a gentleman has a heart attack, his left arm goes numb, and it's because the same nerves that go down your arm branch forward and go to the heart. So if it gets down to that threshold of 60%, 
My heart's a muscle, it has to beat harder. What's that do to my blood pressure? It shoots my blood pressure up. And so I can take the medication. I can massage the muscles, I can exercise, I can change my nutrition, but if I don't address the damage on that nerve, how long do I have high blood pressure? And the answer is forever, until I take care of and address that underlying cause of nerve damage. This principle of subluxation applies to every single nerve that comes out of our spine. And so, like this example of pressure on the nerve going to my heart, I can have pressure on a nerve or damage on a nerve anywhere else in my spine. However, the difference is the symptoms. Because depending on what nerve has damage on it will create a different symptom. For instance, if I had pressure on the nerves in the middle part of my neck, C4, C5, those nerves, if you're looking at this chart here, they go right to my thyroid gland. So it can begin to affect my thyroid hormone, which is my metabolism. It can make me tired, fatigue, issues with sleeping and my circadian rhythm. The top two nerves in, in my neck affect blood supply going up around to my forehead. And so if, if I restrict blood flow around to your forehead, it's gonna give you a headache. And if any of you have had a, a really, really intense headache, we're talking about a migraine. When you have a migraine, you have to wall yourself off in a dark room. And so the, the nerves in the top part of your neck, they go to the eyes. And then those same nerves also branch out and go to the ears, so loud noises, um, they intensify the pain. So it's all the same part of the nervous system. If that's the underlying cause, damage on the nerves, that's what we have to address. So it's the first thing that we're concerned with here at Stronghold, and it really should be the first thing that you're concerned with if you not only wanna get rid of the symptoms, but if you wanna get healthy again. And so what exactly are we looking for when we pull up your x-rays? The first thing is, is my spine straight from the front or from the back view, depending on how you're looking at it? If it isn't straight, it's called scoliosis. Um, it's not healthy, scoliosis can cut 14 to 17 years off of your lifespan. And then the second way we're gonna be looking at the spine is from a side view. From a side view, you have to have three healthy curvatures in your spine. The first and honestly the most important area is gonna be in the neck. You have to have a forward curve in your neck, you have to have a forward curve in your low back, and then a backward curve in the mid spine. Similar to what you'll see on this slide here. Three curves from the side and then straight from the front. So if my spine looks like, like that, I should be very, very healthy. Because if the spine's lined up properly, it's doing its job, it's protecting those nerves. Now, when we take x-rays on you and your spine isn't sitting in that position and there's subluxation present, that is what we have to address. So when we look at your x-rays, there's a couple of different questions that we are gonna ask you guys. And those questions are gonna be based off of the three main things that we're looking for in the most important part of your spine, which actually is your neck. And so when we're looking at the neck, the primary thing that we're gonna be looking for in that region of the spine is, do you have what's called a curve? And so if you're taking notes right now, three things that you wanna write down, number one is arc of life. Is my spine curving the proper way. And scientists call this your arc of life because every single message that your brain sends down the spinal cord has to physically travel through that curve in the neck. If you don't have a curve in your neck, it is poor structure. And biomechanically speaking, it causes degeneration because particular bones in your neck will take on an added amount of weight. So the first thing is our arc of life, it has to measure 43 degrees. 43 degree arc is one of the strongest structures known to man. If you look at the Natchez Trace Bridge, or maybe you've driven over the Hoover Dam from an aerial view or the St. Louis Arcway, all of those structures are a 43 degree arc. Um, and it's a very, very sound structure. We have to have an arc in our neck because we carry around this bowling ball head all day long. And the average human head weighs about 14 pounds. So we're distributing all of that weight equally through each of the bones in the neck and they're all sharing the burden of that weight. If I were to apply a little bit of stress downward, the way that gravity occurs, and I have a healthy curve in my neck, all of that pressure from carrying the weight of my head, 
if I were to increase it and multiply it almost tenfold, they found the bones in your neck will fracture and break before the discs in between those bones would ever herniate. Also, what they found is if you lose just 50% or half of your curve and you apply half of the original force, almost immediately the discs take on the weight load and start buckling. So if you're seeing us for a herniated disc, again, question at the end of the day, what's causing it? And I guarantee you structure is an underlying issue that needs to be addressed. So the first thing we're looking for is gonna be a curve in your neck, your arc of life measuring 43 degrees. The second thing that we're gonna be looking for is if we do a little anatomy 101, you're gonna notice you've got all of the bones that are in your neck are relatively shaped the same, pretty much square-like. And then when we get to this top bone right here in the highest level of the neck, that bone is uniquely shaped. It's actually called your atlas. And so this bone, you can feel it in the soft spot behind your ear, there's a little notch right here. It surrounds and protects the most important part of your nervous system, the connection between your brain and your spinal cord. It's called your brain stem. 58 million nerves travel right through that bone. And so if this bone is lined up properly, from a side view, it should look like an airplane taking off at 18 degrees. And that's the next thing that we're gonna be looking for. If it doesn't look like an airplane taking off, and instead it looks like an airplane landing and it's sitting in a flat position, or it looks like a rocket ship where it's shooting up at too high of an angle, both of those things can put a substantial amount of pressure and damage right there at the top part of the neck on your brainstem. Now, what does the brainstem control? Brainstem, it's not a trick question. It controls everything that you really don't have to think about. Blood pressure, mood, hormone levels. There's a nerve that comes off of the top part of your neck that goes all the way down to your digestive system. So from here in the neck, it can actually cause symptoms and issues with your digestion. Irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease, it even can affect diabetes. There's a nerve coming off that top part of your neck that goes right to your pancreas, and it affects how your body has the ability or inability to produce insulin. Now there's 105 million Americans that are diabetic or pre-diabetic right now, so that top part of the neck is absolutely crucial that we evaluate whether or not it's being protected properly. And then the third thing that we're gonna be looking for on your neck x-ray is spacing, because the spacing is telling us whether or not the disc that's in your spine is healthy. These discs act as shock absorbers in between those bones, and those discs are 88% water. The cool thing about these discs is if they're hydrated, and they're full of 88% water as they should be, then they're gonna create spacing in between the bones and allow the lifeline that comes out there to function properly. And if the nerve's functioning properly, then the organ that it goes to and controls will also be functioning properly. And that's exactly what we want. If I don't have any of them and I'm dealing with low back pain or something that's lower in my spine, those issues will never resolve until I take care of these up here first. Now, if we're moving forward, the next thing that we have to consider is how long has the problem been there? It is not an overnight process for me to go from normal to phase one degeneration. These phases of degeneration are a long, lengthy process. So it takes an average of anywhere from 12 to 15 years for me to go from nice healthy arc of life to straight neck. So if you're seeing a straight neck on your x-rays and you're at phase one degeneration, how long has the problem been there? A while. We're talking about 15 years of muscle memory, gravity weighing down on my spine, postural habits, all adding together over the course of that time to even get you in that position in the first place. If you're at phase two degeneration, you don't just lose the curve in your neck, now it actually starts to curve in the wrong direction. It's a reverse curve, and that reverse curve is anywhere from 15 to 25 years. Again, a muscle memory, postural habits, and gravity weighing down on the spine. Right there at phase three, the amount of degeneration that's occurring in the spine is very, very detrimental. So we definitely don't wanna wait until it gets 
all the way down to this point. The best place to catch this is at phase one or phase two. The real reason why we wanna have a curve in your neck or an arc of life is because all that life that your brain is sending down the spinal cord, we want to ensure that it's getting down there at your full God-given potential. At the bottom here, you're gonna see a normal healthy curve and then a loss of curvature. And so it's showing us how does it actually affect the spinal cord. This is MRI, cross-sectional research that was performed, looking at two different types of individuals, one that had the curve and then one that lost the curve. I wasn't a very healthy kid myself. When I was three, I had a really bad allergic reaction, an asthma attack that it triggered, my airway is closed up, my parents rushed me off to the hospital, and thank God for it because otherwise I probably wouldn't be here today, but they were able to get the allergic reaction to stop with an EpiPen, got the breathing under control. Long story short, I go to an asthma allergy specialist, and from three years of age all the way up to about 17, I was on five prescription medications, two asthma inhalers, two allergy medications, a nasal spray. For the last four years of that bit, I was doing allergy injections in the arm to try and get my immune system to fight off the, the allergens. All while that was going on, I used to look up to my grandfather as being the epitome of health. He ate really well and he took good care of himself and he exercised all the time. And even on top of that, for 31 years in a row, he went and had physicals. Blood pressure cuff on the arm, look up the nose, down the throat, checked all of his vital signs, and the only thing the doctors found was slightly elevated blood pressure, for which they told him to take a baby bear aspirin every single day for a healthy heart. And I was always thinking, man, I wanna be like him, I wanna exercise, I wanna have that freedom with my health, I wanna take care of myself. I still remember my father getting the call, Grandpa Al, was walking out of the gym in the Bronx, New York, 63 years of age, and he dropped dead of a heart attack. Never got to say goodbye to my grandfather, and for me, that was something that stuck with me literally for the rest of my life. It changed me because I was always under the assumption that my grandfather was healthy, but clearly something was missed. And I know for a fact that he had never been to a chiropractor a day in his life, never had x-rays taken, never evaluated the spine, and so my grandfather, is this gentleman right here on the right. We all probably have this person in our, our family, like Uncle Billy, how's Uncle Billy still alive, never exercises, doesn't take care of himself, sits on the couch and smokes the cigars, very much like George Burns, and outlives Grandpa Al. How's that possible? Well, we took x-rays on Uncle Billy. True story, Uncle Billy is somewhere between here and here, very, very good curve in his neck, 38 degree curve. So what we're seeing on this slide is very simply, Healthy, unhealthy. Healthy, sick. This person over here, Uncle Billy, has a good curve in his neck. What's inside those bones, the spinal cord, nice and relaxed. Very, very healthy position. Grandpa Al never had x-rays taken. Nobody ever looked at his nervous system. The wire is going to his heart. And he's at a phase one degeneration. I, I don't have the x-rays to prove it, but I know for sure in my heart that that's what happened to him. He has pressure on the spinal cord. What the research actually shows is inside the bones there, the spinal cord is only so long, and so if I lose my curve, it actually stretches and tethers my spinal cord very much like a rubber band. I definitely do not want that happening if I'm trying to live my best life ever, if I wanna be healthy, if I, if I wanna get rid of the neck pain or the symptoms that I'm dealing with. So it's all about what's inside those bones. Number two, Remember we were talking about the atlas, that atlas bone, the airplane taking off at 18 degrees, why is that so crucial? Well, I don't know if, if maybe I'm dating myself here for some of the younger generation or not, but do you remember Christopher Reeves? The actor that played Superman, Christopher Reeves, he was really healthy by all means on all account. Um, he was probably in the prime of his career and in his life, and I'm not sure if you remember or not, but he had a horsing accident fell off the horse, jutted his chin into the ground, and that top bone atlas in his neck shifted forward and pushed right into his brainstem. It moved the width of your pinky a quarter of an inch. And when that happened, almost instantly, Christopher Reeves lost control from the neck all the way down. He, in an instant, became a quadriplegic, lost control and function 
to every single organ in his body. He damaged one bone in the neck and he had to have a pacemaker that would beat his heart for him. He had to have iron lungs, pump and breathe his lungs. He even had a team of specialists that would push on his gut so he could go to the bathroom in a colostomy bag. Christopher Reeves didn't have bad organs. That's not where the damage was. It's not like someone came and stabbed his heart and it stopped working. Christopher Reeves had damage here in the nervous system. So it's super important that that top bone in our neck is sitting at the appropriate angle. When we show you your x-rays, if you're even one degree out, I'm gonna do my best to let you know because again, it's the most important system in your body. The next thing that we're gonna be looking at is gonna be the rest of your spine. If your spine is straight up and down from a front or from a back position, you should be very, very healthy. And if you're dealing with issues, it's not coming from the spine, it's not coming from the nervous system. So the first thing we're gonna be looking at on this x-ray for you is whether or not your hips are level. If your hips aren't level and you're carrying your weight offset, depending on how much you actually weigh, you could be carrying anywhere from eight to about 17 or even 18 extra pounds of weight on one leg versus the other. So it throws the foundation of your spine off. From a back view on your x-rays, you're gonna see red lines are where your spine is at. And then the center black line is where your spine should be. So these red lines that are on here are gonna mark the center of each and every one of the bones going up your, your spine or up your back there. If they line up perfectly with that black line, then your spine's in the right position. If they don't, and they were to look something like this, um, healthy or sick is the question. And I know you're already thinking, well, sick. This curvature in the spine is called scoliosis. And we alluded to this earlier, but the scoliosis is when the spine shifts towards the side. The scoliosis has the ability to actually cut off life supply in multiple levels of the spine on the nerves coming out. If you ask any doctor, cardiologist, pulmonologist, neurologist, orthopedic doctor, chiropractor, is scoliosis bad? They're gonna tell you yes, absolutely, because they would never do a $250,000 spinal surgery on your spine if this wasn't serious and life-threatening. If the scoliosis gets bad enough, it causes cardiopulmonary failure, it causes the heart and lungs to shut down. See, the difference here is we're not gonna wait until it becomes 250 grand surgery we're gonna address it before it ever becomes a major problem for you. If this is $250,000 spinal surgery and unhealthy, the question is, what is this type of misalignment or subluxation in the spine? The answer is unhealthy, it's sick. If there's even three or four degrees of curve and it's very minute, you might not be concerned about this, but I am, because I know that pressure on a nerve has the ability to cause an organ to shut down early. Again, develop disease, symptoms, all the stuff that we were talking about earlier. So the subluxation in the spine, if it's there, and it's even three degrees, we'll do our best to let you know about it. So from a back view, the two primary things you are gonna be looking for are the hips are nice and level, and very simply, your spine is straight from the back view. We wanna give you the opportunity to apply some of this information, maybe practice a little bit on other patients' x-rays that have given me permission to show you their films. Um, so before we actually go through reading your x-rays, just want you to take a, a couple of minutes and practice here. The first x-ray that I'm gonna walk you through is actually one of the first patients that I had the opportunity to take care of while I was still in chiropractic school. It's a little seven-year-old girl named Madison, and I'll show you her x-rays here in a second. If you've been paying attention, it should be very obvious what's going wrong with her, but just to give you a little bit of backstory for her, so when she was two years of age, she started wetting her bed at night. Um, it was maybe one, two nights a week, and then eventually progressed into this five nights a week, very chronic issue that she's been dealing with for the past five years. She's been to multiple different doctors, they haven't been able to figure out what the underlying issue is. They've done blood work and urinalysis, and they've looked at the bladder and all these different organs. So when she came into our student clinic, the first thing I asked mom is, has anybody looked 
at her spine. Has anybody taken x-rays? And the answer was no, so it's the first thing that we did is we took x-rays on her spine. Not only was she dealing with the wetting the bed issue, but during the day she actually was constipated. She had one solid bowel movement every two days roughly, and this poor girl was on three medications as the treatment protocol to try and help her with these issues she's dealing with. Now nobody had ever looked at the spine, so when we, when we took the x-rays for her, the red line is where she's at, black center line is where she should be. If When you're looking at your x-rays, you see blue lines like this with a curve, that's mimicking what your spine is doing between those lines. So Madison here has a seven degree scoliosis in her spine in her low back. And so what is that doing to the nerves that are coming out in between each of these bones? And the answer is it's causing damage to those nerves. And if you look at a nerve chart, where do those nerves actually go? Well, they're gonna come out of the low back at T11, T12, L1, L2, and they go right to the bladder and the large intestine. So I remember walking mom through this saying, look, your daughter has subluxation and damage on the nerves. It's not a large intestine and a bladder problem. And so unfortunately, I, I didn't get to mom well enough, and so she wanted to go get a second opinion. And I told her, look, you can get a second opinion. I can send you to three other chiropractors so you're at least comparing apples to apples. Unfortunately, she didn't listen. She went to an orthopedic doctor. The orthopedic doctor said, she's fine. There's nothing we need to really do about this right now. Let's wait six months, take new x-rays, and make sure it didn't get any worse. And we all know that if I have a problem, and I don't address the problem, what always happens? It always gets worse. And so unfortunately, that's what happened with Madison. They waited six months. They did no physical therapy, chiropractic, any care to address the structural issue of her spine. And after six months, another student intern took over. Um, I was up here in Nashville, Tennessee. I got a phone call from that intern saying, Madison came back, we took new x-rays. It went from a seven to a 16 degree curve, it got worse. And so we don't want to let that happen to you. If it continues to develop and get worse and worse and worse, the body will begin to compensate. So our body is very, very intelligent. If I start with a small curve in my low back, that small curve, my body will try to counter that so that I'm always standing up nice and straight. And so you'll develop a second curve and over time, those curves continue to develop and worsen until eventually they're at what's called surgical threshold. The next x-rays I'm gonna let you guys practice on, um, patient 41 years of age here in Nashville, Tennessee, named Jessica came into our clinic. And Jessica had been dealing with 17 years of migraine headaches, low back pain, neck pain, digestive imbalance with acid reflux. And she was very much like Madison. Small curves in the spine when she was younger, those curves continued to develop and get worse as I just showed you on the spine there. And eventually she got scheduled uh, to do scoliosis surgery. And so unfortunately, Jessica never went to a chiropractor a day in her life. We took x-rays with her though, because even 17 years of migraine headaches and all these crazy issues that she has going on, for her, all of that didn't really matter. What she was concerned with is she just wanted to have a, a child. Her and her husband have been trying for the past four years to get pregnant, um, to start their own family. And over the past four years, her and her husband have spent $22,000 on fertility treatment, doing the fertility clinic options because of the major hormone imbalance that she had been experiencing. And unfortunately, she had had about four miscarriages, and anybody that goes through that, you know it's a very traumatic, emotional thing. So we took x-rays on her, and on her x-rays, what you're seeing here is her low back. Left hip, right hip, big 35-degree curve, scoliosis in her low back, crushing off the nerve supply, going out to very, very important part of her nervous system, um, the nerves that are going to her uterus, and ovaries. And so it was with Jessica, when I sat down and showed her these x-rays, she knew almost immediately why she was having issues getting pregnant. And the great thing for me is I didn't have to tell her, 
Um, she actually pointed it out herself. She said, wow, no wonder why I've been having these issues. The other thing you're gonna notice on her x-rays is when we go up the spine, so not only does she have a 35 degree scoliosis down here in her low back, she also has, if we go up the spine, the top half, this thing right there. And on x-rays, bright white is metal. So when I saw these x-rays the first time for her, I asked her already in her, her health history, have you ever had surgery? And she actually said no. But when we took the x-rays, instantly I, I had to ask her, Jessica, what is that? It turns out in 1997, she had a scoliosis surgery that she was scheduled for. It cost her $240,000 and her insurance covered 90% of it. So she was left over with 10% of that bill. And here you're gonna notice that it's one rod that they put in the spine. This is before they started doing some of the more advanced spinal surgery. And unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about that. That's too late. It's not like my teeth rot, fall out, and I get dentures and fake teeth that I can put in. I can't do that with my spine. And so for Jessica, when she understood what that actually meant, she, she was in tears because the insurance company paid to put the spine rod in, but they weren't willing to pay to have it removed. So a very important point I want for you to realize is who pays for your care between 60% and 100% when you're not showing any major signs of symptoms? And the answer is you do. Because who's responsible for your health? You are. Insurance companies, health insurance is no guarantee that you're gonna stay healthy. In fact, insurance companies are not gonna pay for your clean organic food, your bottled water, your gym memberships, your most people's chiropractic care, preventative things on a daily basis that are actually gonna build health in your body. Insurance companies are designed to start paying for your care when you get all the way down at that threshold of symptoms. Because it's when the symptoms appear that we go to, like if my kids get sick, when I take them to the doctor. And when I take them to the doctor, the two biggest forms of treatment are gonna be medication and surgery. And so Jessica was actually doing both of those. Her medication for 16 years of migraine headaches was Imitrex injections in the arm to help her deal with the pain. Her insurance company dropped her from coverage for that because of pre-existing condition. And so this woman is spending $320 a month out of pocket on just those medications alone. Even with this amount of curvature in her low back, there might not be anything I can do about that, but there's certainly something we can do about the curve in the low back. Three things to correct the spine. First thing we have to do is warm the spine up. Even if you've been to another chiropractor before, chances are you probably didn't do any active warm-up exercises. And so if I would like to mold candle wax, just as an example, that candle wax has to be warm. If the candle wax is warm, I can easily mold it. If it's cold, I can. And the same holds true for your spine. So every single one of our patients, we're gonna go ahead and prescribe active warm-up exercises to warm up not only the neck with a traction exercise pumping the discs in the spine, but also the low back and the rest of the spine. Once we get all the tissue nice and warm and the blood's in the muscles and we've pumped and rehydrated these discs, the next step from there is gonna be the chiropractic adjustment. And so we do the chiropractic adjustments based on x-rays, obviously. And so for her, her left hip has to come up, the bones in her spine have to go back towards the right, we have to pull the rotation out. And so I make the adjustment based on x-rays, not how I feel or how you feel that day, it's all based on where the bone needs to be realigned. And the chiropractic adjustment's the most important part because that is the single thing that's gonna take pressure and damage off of the nerve and allow your body to heal. Step number three is after we do the adjustment, let's say, hey look, I've lost all of that curve in my neck, we do the adjustment and bring the spine back to where it's supposed to be. If I've had 15 years of muscle memory where my spine was in that original position, after we adjust you, 
what is it the muscles want to do? And the answer is it wants to pull them right back to where they were before. It's called muscle memory. So you have 15 years of muscle memory that we have to now work against. So step number three is we have to rehabilitate the muscles. And so we achieve that through using body weighting, maybe head weights or, or shoulder weights. And the doctor is going to go ahead and walk you through exactly what your rehab is that's necessary for you. But we wear the body weighting, and we stand on a vibration platform. And that vibe platform basically stimulates nerves on the bottom part of your feet that talk to the cerebellum, the balance center of your brain. And that's the part of your brain that actually controls these posture muscles. So over time, we begin reprogramming those muscles. So after we do muscle rehab, your body's still going to pull everything back. It's just going to do it less severe than before. And the, the key here is time and repetition. So it requires warm-up exercises, adjust the spine, do the rehab. It pulls it back a little less severe than before. And every time we do it, that final resting position of the spine ends up being much, much closer to where it should be. Today's probably the longest visit you'll have here in our clinic. Once we teach you how to do those exercises and a whole uh, step through the office, you're looking at an average of about 20 minutes per visit. We saw Jessica three times a week, 20 minute visits, and then we took new x-rays after about three months of care. Jessica came rolling into the office just six weeks into care in a brand new car. She came running into the office and she's like, Dr. Dave, Dr. Dave, come, uh, come outside, check this out, come check this out. And we ran out front and we see a new car and she's like, I got a new car. Thank you guys so much, it's all because of you. And I honestly was confused, but apparently her headaches that she was having, she was having four or five migraines a week. No joke with those Imitrex medications she was doing. In the past six weeks, she only had two migraine headaches. So she took the money that she was spending on the medication, which was never actually addressing the cause, happened to be nerve pressure in her neck, and she used that money to now go ahead and lease a brand new car. And I don't know about you, but again, at the end of the day, the most important thing is health. Even if she had that brand new car, but she was still dealing with the headaches, she would never enjoy it. How incredible is it that when we took new x-rays for her, this curve in her low back, three months into care, goes from a 35 to a 30 degree curve. It's five degrees of nerve improvement. Her husband and her conceived their first child, and they held through the entire term of pregnancy. And not only that, about a year later, they ended up conceiving their second child. And I, got, I had the wonderful opportunity of meeting the second child, baby Skylar, on a Friday evening, 10.30 p.m. at St. Thomas Hospital, and we checked baby Schuyler 30 minutes after he was born to see whether or not his atlas was holding in the proper position. Because for most of us, this is the first time that we actually experience subluxation in the spine is through the birth process. The birth process can be very traumatic on a little baby being pulled from the womb. Multiple, multiple pounds of pull force can easily cause a lesion or a subluxation to occur in the spine. And this is actually the first place for most of us where it does in fact develop. So when we're looking at the curve in the neck and the curve in the low back, these two curves from a side view are curves that are developed through childhood. You're not born with any of these curves in your spine except for right here in the middle part of the back. And so as you start to crawl as a baby and you pick your head up, that's actually when you develop the neck curve. And then when you start walking upright, we fall about 5,000 times by the age of five, but those curves in the low back and in the neck are developed as we age. Most of America is dealing with neck pain, low back pain, neck issues, low back issues that are all nerve related. And the question is, why is it always neck and low back? Answer is, two reasons. One, you never developed these curves in the neck or in the low back properly from birth. And over the course of life, the muscle memory crept in, kept the spine that way, and you started to develop the issues over time. 
Option number two is you developed the curve properly, but mom never taught you how to take care of your spine the way that you would brush your teeth. And so every, every morning you brush your teeth, you don't think about it, you probably don't even remember doing it this morning, but you did it because of habit. And so you don't brush your teeth because you already have a cavity, you brush your teeth so you don't get a cavity. It's the preventative aspect, the pre preventative care. So similarly, at our clinic here at Stronghold, you are gonna actually, as part of your care, learn how to actively, on a daily basis, take care of your spine. Because I don't wanna just, hey look, let's adjust your spine, right, it's there, put it back to the right position, and then you're out of pain, and you say, high five, I fixed the problem. We don't wanna just base it on the pain, we wanna structurally correct the spine and restore the proper structure, and then teach you how to keep it that way for the rest of your life. So part of care here at our clinic is home care equipment and exercises that we prescribe to show you how to actually take care of your spine on a daily basis. The final x-ray that I'm gonna go ahead and, and let you guys practice on is a guy named Bob. Bob came into our clinic, very, very hyper gentleman. He was dealing with hyperthyroidism. So his thyroid was shooting out hormone through the roof and his metabolism was sky high. Bob came in talking a million miles an, an hour and basically was like, hey, can I get adjusted? Can you get, can you get x-rays taken? Blah, 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 like really, really fast. So we had to say, calm down, sir. Let's go ahead and start with the most important thing and that's x-rays. So we took the x-rays on Bob and Bob's story is very unique because it's not like he wasn't getting adjusted and he wasn't going to a chiropractor. Bob was actually getting adjusted and seeing a chiropractor for the past 15 years. And over the course of 15 years, if I was working out for 15 years, I should have something to show for it. Maybe pi pi forearms or like big biceps or something. But Bob, when we took his x-rays, the blue lines are where his spine is at in his neck and the red curve is where he should be. Bob is at 16 degrees when he should be at 43 degree curve in his neck. So is Bob healthy or sick? Bob's sick. And the thing is, he didn't realize it until just three years ago when he began to develop the thyroid issues in the first place. He's so wired that he can't sleep at night and he's an insomniac, so he's been popping sleeping pills and taking thyroid medication for the past three years. I had to back up though and ask Bob, how did your spine get this way in the first place? If he had been getting adjusted for 15 years, how did it get that way? And he said, well, it isn't what I wanted and it isn't what my doctor wanted. Who has the biggest influence for most of us on our health decisions? And the answer is your insurance company. Bob's insurance company signed a contract with that chiropractor that was taking care of him to be an in-network provider. And this is a big reason why in our clinic, we don't sign contracts with insurance companies because if I do, my hands are tied and I'm a puppet for the insurance company. Being an expert here in the field and working with spines all day long, I know Bob needs at, at minimum 50 visits over the course of roughly six months of care. The thing is, if I signed a contract with Bob's insurance company, I don't tell him that. I tell him, look, this is what your insurance will pay for, 12 visits a year, so we'll see you for 12 visits a year. And unfortunately, that is exactly what happened for Bob. He went and got adjusted one day a month, got one step forward, 29 days a month, took 29 steps backwards, and gravity never took a day off. So over the course of 15 years, Bob lost that curve in his neck. And over time, gravity won. So Bob's at a phase one degeneration. If you look, first thing we're looking for is curvature. We see that he's lost a significant portion of curve in his neck. The second thing we're looking for is the atlas bone, that top bone in the neck. Is it sitting at the right angle? And then the third thing, and this is really what I want for you guys to see on this x-ray, is the spacing. So he's got thick spacing, thick spacing, thin space on that disc in the middle part of his neck. That thin spacing at C4, C5 is causing compression and damage on the nerve that's coming out of that level. And if you look at, again at the nerve chart, where do those nerves go? They go right to the thyroid gland. So Bob started on the treatment protocol that we recommended for him, 
And on this treatment protocol, we saw Bob three times a week, then two times a week, and then eventually once a week. And now we actually see Bob once every other week. The thing is, we saw him for uh, six months of care, and after three months, we took a follow-up x-ray on Bob, walking him through all of the treatment protocol that we were talking about, warm the spine up, getting adjusted, rehab the muscles, and then active home care. So taking care of the spine at home. And with Bob, on his follow-up x-rays, he goes from a 16 to a 33 degree curve in his neck. Bob is almost all the way back. And on the exercise detox side of things, with some of the workshops that we teach here at the clinic, he actually lost 31 pounds. Bob got to the point where instead of sleeping about two and a half hours a night and popping the sleeping pills, he actually came into our clinic, threw away the sleeping medication, and was sleeping upwards of seven, eight hours a night. Eventually, Bob's uh, energy levels kind of subsided a little bit, and he calmed down, and he was a little bit more pleasant to talk to. So this process takes place for every single one of us whether we like it or not, over the course of someone's lifetime, if they start with a normal healthy curve in their neck, gravity will pull the, the head forward. It pushes the bones in your neck backwards. The airplane up top, Atlas, starts landing and you start occluding the spacing above that bone. This is now phase two degeneration curving in the wrong direction. Massive amount of pressure on the discs. Your body will do anything and everything it can to stop further nerve damage. It'll even lay down extra bone if it has to. Right here, you're gonna see bone spurring and that's exactly what's taking place. The body is going into a defense mode to try and stop that further nerve damage. This is now phase three degeneration. Over the course of my life, if I understand that this principle is taking place and gravity is weighing down on my spine, I can take the right actions that I need to to stop that process or slow it down. When we go through your recommendations, we're just gonna tell you what is it gonna take to get you better? What's necessary? So that necessary care for Bob ended up being not 12 visits a year, seeing him once a month, but 50 visits over the course of six months with very specific frequency and duration of care. And so we're gonna lay out and map your plan based on the position of your spine, how long has the subluxation been, been there, and then what do we need to do uh, for rehab and exercises to actually get it back. Bob's biggest concern was finances. Unfortunately, Bob was used to 12 visits a year, in-network, insurance, paying for his visits. Realistically speaking, most of us, even if we have an amazing insurance coverage plan, insurance never completely actually pays for our care. So for Bob, I had to ask him, well, how much were you actually spending doing the insurance route? And for Bob, doing 12 visits a year, seeing this chiropractor, he was spending $35 per visit on his copays. So at $35 a visit, um, I had to ask him, okay, look, you're doing $35 copays. Well, how much are you actually spending on your insurance premium so that you have the luxury to even see this chiropractor and do $35 copays in the first place? It turned out Bob was spending about $450 per month on his premium, and before his insurance would even kick out, he had to meet his what? His deductible. So he had a $2,000 deductible. So at the end of the day, for Bob to actually see this chiropractor over 12 months of premium, he's spending about 5,400. Bob was actually, in total, spending about $7,850 to go for 12 visits of care. So I told Bob, look, you need, you need more than that. You're gonna need somewhere between 40 and 60 visits at a phase one degeneration. For him, specifically, it was 50 visits. And Bob freaked out for a second because he thought, well, hey, 50 visits, 50 visits is gonna cost me a whole lot of money. And he said, look, can I just pay per visit? So as I come into the clinic, I just pay for what I get that day. And I said, well, yeah, sure. But at Stronghold, we decided not to do a pay-per-visit program because it only just makes it more expensive in the long run. What we ended up designing instead is a monthly payment option. But just to walk you through some of this, if we did do a pay-per-visit plan, basically what you'd be looking at is a $60 adjustment. 
um, you would be looking at $32 for exercise number one and then $40 to do the rehab. So if we did actually make you pay per visit, on a per visit basis, it would end up being about $132 per visit. So for Bob, if he was coming in for 50 visits into the clinic, multiplying that 132 by 50, Bob would be spending about $6,600 instead of the $7,850, but at least he'd be getting what he actually needs to correct his spine. So instead of doing all of this, we make this very, very simple for every single one of our patients coming in through the doors here. So when we go over your x-rays, we're not gonna present either of those options for you. If you have insurance coverage, it will apply. It's just gonna be out of network benefits and coverage. But to make care way more affordable, we've developed a monthly payment option. So for Bob, we were able to get him the 50 visits that he needed for care to correct his spine. But for Bob, it ended up being in a monthly payment option. So doing a monthly payment option for these 50 visits, we have to split your care into three different distinct phases. Phase number one is the portion of care that basically we can't discount the care for you. And this is because of Medicare and Medicare guidelines and federal restrictions. So for Bob and for most of us in a phase one degeneration, it's the first 10 visits. And in those first 10 visits, we cannot discount or decrease the cost. It's just the fee is what it is for those visits. So for those first couple of visits, it's about 132 per visit times these 10 visits comes out to about 1300, right? Then after that, all of the remaining 40 visits of care, a couple of different things happen. Number one, we're gonna send all of our patients home with home care equipment, and teach you what do you need to do to take care of your spine every day. When we make that happen, we don't have to charge you in the clinic to do these exercises. So the exercises are gone for all 40 of these visits. The second thing that happens is, since we've already done the momentum and the work to start moving your spine in the right direction, this portion of care, the adjustments are considered a corrective or wellness care adjustment which is a separate fee than the regular adjustment fee. So for these visits, the adjustment fee is $35. So at $35, we're saving you thousands of dollars that way. First phase is 1,300. Here for the 40 visits, comes out to about 1,400. And then the third step here is what's called corrective wellness care. So for Bob, that was his home care equipment. And for each of you, your home care equipment's gonna vary depending on what exactly you need in terms of equipment and exercises. But the average cost of the home care equipment is probably around 350. So at 350, when we add these three components of your care together, the total over here ends up being about 30, 50, and for Bob, he was able to literally half the cost of a pay per visit program and much more less than insurance route, get the care that he needed, but then actually do that over a monthly payment option. So Bob did a small down payment and then divided the remainder over 10 monthly payments. Um, and he was for about 250, 260 a month able to afford the care. And most importantly, besides afford the care, he was reaping from the benefits of living a healthy life. Addressing the issues with the nervous system, his body began to heal, and he came off of his thyroid medication, his sleeping medication, and on top of that, lost 31 pounds on the exercise detox side of things. When we go over your x-rays, there's a couple of different questions that we're gonna ask. So when we put up your x-rays, the first question that we're gonna be asking you is, what do you see? Do you have the curve that you're supposed to in, in your neck, is your arc of life there? Is the atlas or the airplane sitting at the right angle? And then myself or whichever doctor is going through your x-rays with you, we'll make sure that we guide you through this process in case there's little details that you're forgetting. The second thing is, based on what you see, how is that causing some of the symptoms that you're dealing with, the malfunction, to develop? We'll have a nerve chart and we can show you where each of these nerves goes. 
And then number three is very simply, is this something that you'd like to get corrected? If so, awesome, we're gonna go ahead and go over the recommendations with you. And those recommendations uh, will include length and type and eventually cost of care as well. So after we go over the recommendations, we'll then go ahead and go through the finances with you. An important thing to remember is very much like the law of gravity that we were talking about earlier. When we're looking at your x-rays, really what we're looking at is a snapshot in time. Where are you at currently today in that process of degeneration? Just like this video has shown us that the spine over time, gravity pulls it out of alignment. It starts pulling the head forward, pushing the bones in the neck backwards. This process is a reality for every single one of us. And so when we're putting your x-rays up, we're saying, look, you're, you're right here. You're at phase one or phase one and a half or phase two degeneration. We have two options at that point. And I'm, I might be preaching to the choir here, but obviously it's like, hey, look, do I want to take care of this or is now not the right time? So time should never be a reason to not address your health. If I have a problem and I leave it, and then down the road a year from now or two years from now, I decide now it's okay to, to get that thing taken care of, it's gonna cost me more time and more money because it's a more complex problem to fix. Now, if I understand there's this thing called gravity, Every time I drop the pen, it's going to fall. If I understand the law, I can then leverage that law to my advantage. I can intervene. And so the same holds true here. We're looking at your x-rays. Where are you at in time? I drop the pen. I can catch it and bring it back up. And so that's the exact thing we're going to be doing here with you is stop that process, catch your spine, and rehab it. Bring it back to where it needs to be. So we'll walk you through how that systematically can take place for you. I'm gonna flip the script a little bit here and say, look, for you to be a patient here in our clinic, we're gonna ask for a couple of things from you. Number one is, very simply, put in the time, the energy necessary, buckle down a little bit so that we can get your spine corrected. At the end of the day, as much as I'd love to say we're responsible for your health, you know that you are. You're responsible for your health and you're the one that's gonna have to make your visits and put the time in and do the exercises at home, but really it's not that big of a deal. It's very achievable and very easy. You just have to make the decision. When I was 17, for the first time in my life, I had x-rays taken by a chiropractor. Um, my brother was like, you need to come check out this doctor. And for me, I wasn't a neck pain, low back pain, issue for me, so I didn't really actually listen to him at first, and after he asked me a couple of times, I knew he cared about me, so I went. When they took the x-rays, it was right here in the top part of my back, I had about an 11 degree curve, um, and it was crushing off nerve supply for me, subluxation on the nerves going to my lungs and to my lymphatic system, and so I had no idea that it was a nerve issue that was causing my allergies, as well as the asthma that I had been dealing with for literally my entire life. I listened to the doctor's recommendations and decided to commit. I put the time in, I made my visits, I did the exercises, I got adjusted, and wouldn't you know it, three months later, I came off of every medication I had ever taken. For me, it was the, the day of liberty for me because I didn't necessarily, it wasn't because it was like I came off my medications, it was a day of liberty because I finally had my birthright back, my health. I didn't have to take the inhalers, the allergy medications, and I could actually take in a full breath. So I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if it's a nerve problem, we can help you with it. God doesn't need any help healing you. He just needs no interference. So let us show you what you need to do to remove that interference. Number two is get your family checked. Within two weeks of you starting care, we make it available for you to get mom, brother, sister, twice removed second cousin, I don't care if they're family for you, we'll get them checked out with a thermal scan on the spine and x-rays to see whether or not they've got any issues going on. That doesn't mean they have to start care, it's more for your peace of mind. And then number three is gonna be mission. We're a mission-based office, there's over a million people here in Nashville and the population continues growing. There is no way physically I'm gonna be able to get my hands on or Dr. John or, or our associates at Stronghold, we're not gonna be able to adjust a million people. That's not what it's about, 
But what it is about is teaching this information to people and getting this in their hands. I know if I were to rewind 30 years ago, put my grandfather in one of these seats, and have him go through this information, it would have radically transformed how he viewed and managed his health. And really, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. We're on a mission to change the health of Nashville, and we need your help to do that. So we're never going to hesitate to ask you, who do you know, who do you love, who do you care about that needs to live a healthier life? So in just a moment, we're going to go ahead and go over your x-rays, your recommendations, and your care plan options. And we'll make sure that we answer any question that we didn't already. And we really look forward to the transformation that's going to take place for you in your health and in your family's health. Remember, the greatest doctor is the one that lives right inside of you.